Hi, welcome to the Crafty Tinkerer. I'm Nicole, and this week I'm going to be talking about buttons, sweaters, and yarn embellishments. So I would like to say thank you to the new subscribers I had this week. I appreciate you subscribing and to everyone else, I appreciate you being here. If this is your first time here, welcome. If it is not your first time here, welcome back. Um, this week I should, <laughs> I said I was going to do the mug cozy and I got distracted. I did a few more stitches of the mug cozy and then I cast on two more sweaters. But I'm not going to talk about those first. First, I'm going to tell you about the unexpected yarn embellishments. Um, Mary coordinated with the ladies at the Perfect Blend Yarn Shop in Saugerties to, last year they yarn bombed all the parking meters in Saugerties. This year, <clears throat> this year they're doing unexpected yarn embellishments and some of the things that they have come up with are adorable, creative, like funny. Um, so if you are in town for Indie Untangled or if you're in town for the New York Sheep and Wool Festival and you're heading to the Perfect Blend, make sure to keep your eyes peeled for some yarn embellishments. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I was a little bit more literal and I thought fall. So I went on Ravelry and I picked up um, a free pattern called Autumn Leaf Garland by Christina Scottens. Scottness. I'll spell it down there. I do not know how to pronounce it, so I am sorry. Um, of C Designs. And the pattern was really easy. I was able to memorize it and just, I made two leaves and in that time I was able to memorize the pattern. So um, it's, it's really great. And here is an example of one of the leaves. Now the pattern calls for a bulky yarn and the first few I did, I did not use a bulky weight yarn. So I got teeny tiny little leaves. And then someone showed me how to double and triple up uh, the yarn to make larger leaves. So that is what I've been doing now. And you can see there is a very big difference. <laughs> it's a great pattern though. Um, and I've been having fun with them. They don't take that long to make, which is a good thing because I have a lot of them to make. Uh, and my daughter actually came with me last night to the Unexpected Yarn Embellishment Meetup. And she does crochet chain stitches. And Mary taught her how to double up um, to make a thicker chain. So she was able to do that for me and I will be hanging, whoops, hanging my leaves from these chains. So she has another one going now um, that I'm sure she'll do more of today. So that's been helpful. And I have different colors. This one's a yellow one. And then I have an orange yarn too, but that one, I haven't done any of the leaves yet. So, and I might combine red and orange together when I double, triple up. That I think is gonna be good because the leaves are changing and the leaves aren't always just one color. So, you know, especially the maple leaves, they get orangey, red, yellow, all in one leaf. You can have an array of colors. So yeah, that's 
That is what I'll be working on this week. And also, while I was there, I picked up my buttons for my sweater. Now, I still have to fill in the pockets where I was gonna put the pockets. Um, I will probably do that today because it's gonna be warm today. So I'll fill in the pockets, then I'll be able to block my sweater and then I can hang it outside um, to dry. So yeah, that's what, th this is what will be happening. <laughs> when I'm not in the car being a chauffeur today. Um, so yeah, pockets, blocking, and then I'm gonna add my buttons. And my buttons are so cute! And I'll put a better photo up because I'm not sure how well this is gonna pick up here. But I just got these little blue buttons. I think they're half an inch and they have a little bit of a flower detail on them. Um, so I cannot wait to do that. And then I think that I'm gonna have my husband actually steak the mug cozy because I heard that steak and streak, I'm supposed to be wearing my sweater while someone else cuts it. And I didn't realize that, I thought that I would be cutting the sweater. So it's okay though. I trust my husband to do it. <laughs> he probably has a steadier hand than I do. Um, so yeah, I'll have him practice on the mug cozy. But since the weather got so warm, I had a little moment of panic. Like what if it's too warm to wear that? because that is a very, very warm garment. So, let me have a sip of tea and I will tell you what else I've been up to. I have hood eggnog in here. It's very good. <laughs> so, this week, I had my little panicky moment like what if we have warmer temperatures, because that can happen sometimes in New York. I didn't want to have nothing to wear, so I cast on a cotton sweater. Now, I was using um, Knit Picks Dishy Yarn for this, and it was going pretty well. This is a worsted weight yarn, and I was using size 10 needles. And I did this first motif. I just made it up as I went to make a pattern. And then I started to do that with the next one. And I did not like at all the way it was looking. So I ripped it out and took it off took it off the needles. I left it just, you know, sitting here waiting to see what inspiration is going to hit me for how this sweater wants to come out. So, it will be short sleeves. Um and it might be cropped, but I'm not sure. I set it to the side to sort of think on it a little bit. Um, I like how it's come out so far and I just need to try to think about how I wanna go forward with it. Do I wanna do short rows in this? Where am I going to put the short rows? Do I need short rows if I do a crop? I'm not sure. I didn't do short rows in this because it's a cardigan. Um, but I did do short rows in the other sweater that I cast on this week. So the other sweater, now both of these, I'm using the stitch counts from the Strange Brew sweater recipe. Um, Tin Can Knits did a great job with that and I'm just, just using the stitch counts. So 
with this one, let's see, I will show you the front first. I am using uh, Peyton's Canadiana, which is a worsted weight in a navy blue color. I think the color of it is just numbered, but it is a navy blue. And then the contrasting color, these Lion Brand Mandala yarns get me every time. I think I have five or six of these laying around. And this one in particular, because it was so bright, it, um, let's see, I think it's called Mandala Ombre. And the color is called Happy. It is, it is a happy color, it's bright, it's electric, you know? So I thought I would put them together and see what came of it. And so again, I didn't really have a plan for this one. I just went for it, I picked out some motifs that I liked, and this one will probably also be a short sleeve or maybe just a little bit longer than a regular short sleeve. Um, I'm not sure yet because I'm gonna finish up the body, I think, before I do the sleeves. And I'll see how much yarn I have left. I had 300 grams of the Canadiana. So three balls of it. And I'm gonna see how far I get. Luckily, I am short-waisted, <laughs> so, and I don't really have long arms either, so I guess it doesn't matter, but like I said, I'm not planning to do long sleeves with this because I want something to wear in case it's a little bit warmer, although I imagine an acrylic sweater will be warmer than a cotton sweater, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I really like the way that this is coming out. I did do short rows at the back here. Um, they came out slightly off center, but not enough for me to pull anything out. So anyway, that's that. Um, and I've been working on this sweater, I think I cast on about four days ago. So <laughs> it is amazing. Now I have really long needles holding the sleeves. I mean, look at this. Um, it's amazing how fast this works up compared to the fingering weight sweater. I mean, it is so fast. So that gives me confidence that I could probably finish this by the end of next week. Um, yeah, I'll definitely finish this by the end of next week and have all my leaves done because the leaves don't take that long either. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. I went from knitting a dozen hats, who knows, maybe I'll do a dozen sweaters now as long as they're in thicker yarn. I think I have sweater quantities for an Aran weight, a DK weight, and another fingering weight. So we'll see what happens. I won't be doing the fingering weight anytime soon, maybe over the winter. <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited about this one because it's bright. Um, and you know, I just, I love the color. And I told, I did not swatch either. I know, really bad, right? I didn't swatch either one of these. Um, but that's the perk of doing a top-down sweater is that you can put it on to see if it fits. My only thing is that with my smaller needles, so I have a complete set of interchangeable needles and the smaller needles have small cables and the larger needles have large cables and I have tons of the small cables. I mean, I <laughs> I went to order one eight inch cable. And for whatever reason, Amazon sent me three 22 inch cables. And so I was like, this is weird. 
And so I did, I sent back the first set and then I reordered. And again, they sent me three 22 inch cables. And I'm like, this can't be right. You know, what's the deal? And so I kept them. And then I tried ordering an eight inch cable again because I really needed an eight inch cable. I didn't need 22 inch cables. And I got another three set of 22 inch cables. So I have tons of 22 inch small needle cables, but I only have three large needle cables. So I definitely, if I'm gonna be doing sweaters, I definitely need to pick up some more of those because it's a little more time consuming to take all your stitches off, especially when you have a lot of stitches. I mean, I'm, it's not like I'm making a size small sweater. So I have a lot of stitches that I have to take off and just put on waist yarn, but then I have to pick them all back up again. <laughs> Um, so it takes me a little bit longer if I just had a couple extra cables, then I would be able to, you know, change it out and do it a little bit easier. So that's what I did with this and I got spoiled by doing that. So anyway, larger cables are in my future. Um, yeah, so Hopefully next week I will be able to show you the finished product of this and maybe some progress with the cotton. Um, I remember having a cotton sweater when I was in high school and I loved the feel of it. And when I was knitting this, it really reminded me of that sweater. So I'm looking forward to finishing this too, but like I said, I have to formulate some sort of an idea of what I want to do with this one. Like I've said before, I am not one to follow a pattern to the T. Somehow I always end up changing it. I mean, even these little leaves, I change the pattern at the end to make them a little pointier. So there you go. I just cannot do it. Um, I guess if I had to, but I don't have to. I can change it to how I want to do it. So, yeah, exciting times. I am getting very excited for the Sheep and Wool Festival. The colors of the trees I mentioned last week are really changing. Um, and this year they are a lot rustier is how I would say it. They're not bright popping colors, but they're more rusty. So I like it. Thank you to everyone who has reserved their tickets for the Stitch Social. I bought some coffee this week <laughs> and I will be going out next week and buying some tea and really starting to get ready for the Stitch Social. So. Uh, thank you. I can't wait to meet everyone. And the Old Dutch Church is having another event. Actually, there are three different events happening the same evening as the Stitch Social, but they'll be in a different part of the church because I know I've mentioned before that the biannual burning of Kingston is happening this year. So the Old Dutch Church is involved with that and the, they'll be hosting three different events aside from the Stitch Social. So if you are coming, um, make sure that you go in on the Wall Street entrance because that is where the Bethany Hall is. If you go right in those doors, the hall is right there. Um, I'm not that familiar with the church, so I don't know where else they'll be having their events. But anyway, we'll be in the Bethany Hall. And then if you need the handicap ramp, you can park on the there's a driveway that goes up the Fair Street side and the driveway entrance, if you're on Fair Street, it's a one-way street, you would 
turn right into the driveway just before where the cemetery starts. So, and then follow that around and you'll see the ramp that goes into the church. And then if you go in that door, all you have to do is go straight past the kitchen and into the Bethany Hall. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I'll probably bring um, a skein or two of yarn in case anyone wants to do a yarn swap. I really want this night to be casual. And so if you would like to bring a skein to swap, if you have something that you bought and you can't figure out what to do with it now, you'd like to trade it for something else, that's fine. I, um, I'll be bringing something. I don't know what yet though, but I'll definitely be bringing something. So I'm excited and I hope you are too. And if you are going to be in the area and you haven't reserved your tickets yet, I'll put a link down below um, so that you can reserve your Eventbrite tickets. The Stitch Social is happening on Friday, October 18th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Old Dutch Church in the Bethany Hall. So thank you for being here. Thank you for making it this far. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos, there will be a button down here. Click it and don't forget to press the bell for notifications. And if you have any questions or comments for me, uh, feel free to leave them down below. Have a great day.